Welcome back to the New Woo Sessions podcast, where we invite guests to come by and get high here in Nevada's original cannabis lounge, the Sky High Lounge. Let's check it out. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the New Woo Sessions podcast. We are back here for another one. Stoked to have you guys with us and stoked to introduce my guests here. I've got David Halfstein son and Mr. Nicholas Kodelis. Yep, there you go. I didn't screw it up, guys. Yeah, I told you. Good I was going to try. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for coming on the podcast. We're uh, stoked to have you guys here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, for all the guests watching at home, we are sipping here on some lovely can of cocktails we have here in the Sky High Lounge. I've got a blue dream here. I believe Nick does as well. And we got a liquid marijuana here from my boy, David. So cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Thanks for coming on the cheers. podcast. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that's good. Man, we're two seconds in. I already like covered myself in beverage. <laughs> It's cool, you know what I mean? This is a live production. Not live, but all right. So guys, really excited to have you guys here. Um, Mr. David is a notorious skateboarder. I think, what did I write here? I wrote skateboarding legend, actually, you know? So, <laughs> and Mr. Nicholas is the post-harvest manager over at AMA. So stoked to have you guys here and stoked to talk shop a little bit. So first off, we're gonna start with you, David. <clears throat> so David Hafstein's on here, the Iceland Iceman, right? Cool. I like that name. At first, I screwed it up and called it Icelandic Iceman, because, it, and then I realized I was stupid. Weed, right? Um, but anyway, so you are a skateboarding legend, entrepreneur, and cannabis advocate. Uh, your story is one of addiction, recovery, and perseverance. But before any of that, I want to talk about a young David and how you kind of got started skateboarding. Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm from Iceland, so um, that's where the name comes from, Iceland Iceman. There you go. Um, and. I started skateboarding when I moved to America. Um, I had seen someone skating in Iceland and thought it was the coolest thing, but it was, I had no clue how to get a skateboard or, right. um, but when I got to America, everybody was skating. It's kind of like the cool thing to do. Right. Um, so that's how I kind of fell into skating was just thinking it was really, really cool. Awesome. So, and where did you, you came from Iceland, but where were you in stateside? Was it here in Vegas? Yeah, we came from, we went from ice to the desert <laughs> that's pretty polar opposite <laughs> ice there, to right? fire yeah <laughs> that's cool man and it is kind of like it is part of the the west coast culture out here you know skateboarding's huge so uh i mean what were some some early influencers for you that that people that you saw skating that just made you be like dude i have to try that uh well the tony hawk pro skater game that really did it for me there you go was it the original one the first one yeah <clears throat> I, I beat the second game to death on my N64 back in the day, man. That was like the one that soundtrack was like what got me started back in the day, but I I gave up. So <laughs> Yeah, that became a dream was to skate and uh when I moved to America it became real. Awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, man. No, and Tony Hawk, I mean, obviously he's a legend in his own right, but I mean his games there in what the the late nineties, early two thousands, they were just just game changing, man. I know countless hours of my life went to that game. So yeah, they were good. Uh, yeah. I remember one and two pretty uh, extensively on yeah. the, on the game console. Just going, I think that's what uh, introduced me to Goldmember, okay, the band yeah. Goldmember, because yeah. I was big on the first soundtrack, and I was like, yeah. oh, what is this? And they're like, it's ska or whatever. Yeah, so. they did have really great soundtracks yeah. too. So that, that was cool. I know it's one of the things that kind of got me into music as, as a as a young guy myself. But um, so and so you got started. You're moving to America. You're here in Vegas. You're playing Tony Hawk. You're getting skating. At what point did things really kind of start changing for you? Like where you start realizing, like, oh, this might might be a thing, you know? Um, I got sponsored by a skate shop called Board Deep. Okay. Um, and that was a local skate shop here in town. Um, it's no longer right. around, um, but that was kind of a turning point for me where I started taking it more seriously. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of uh, lots of dues you got to pay. Obviously, skateboarding's a, a tough industry, but my man David can absolutely shred. I, I was going down the YouTube rabbit hole yesterday. We were watching. Was the how fast can the Iceland Iceman impossible? And I was watching that video and I was like, dude, that that's crazy, dude. Like 23 miles an hour, this man lands an impossible. And that's. Whew. I was just watching. I was like, dude, just because when you're going that fast, you know, when you fall, like the momentum's got to go somewhere. So definitely, uh, not for the faint of heart. But yeah, my man can shred. So. Hell yeah, man. Well, thank you for letting me know. Let's talk about Nick here. So, Nick, you are the post-harvest manager over at 1933 Industries who produces such noticeable brands as AMA and Level X. Yes, sir. Um, what were you doing before you kind of got into the cannabis space? 
I was a server. I was working in the service industry, uh, serving tables, making money that way, uh, doing it for a long time. I did it for about 17 years, but it wasn't something I was passionate about. So right. uh, when I got here, it was, it was definitely a game changer because one, the service industry here is amazing. Yes. Uh, I came from the Midwest where you don't really make any actual money serving other than what you make at a table. Right. And here you're getting paychecks and tips and everything. So it was pretty awesome moving here and getting to serve and have just almost double my income just from moving. So that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, what part of the Midwest are you from? Uh, I, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and then a lot of a place called Hutchinson, Kansas, right in the middle of Kansas. So Wow, man. You and I are about to be best friends, dude. Oh. I'm from Kansas City myself. Oh, and I, and I spent a lot of years waiting tables myself back oh, home. So there you go. That, uh, that two thirteen an hour is what we used to get back in the day, you know. The, them the zero dollar everything. paychecks. Yeah, dude. Yep. Love that. So <laughs> right on. Uh, at what point did you move to Vegas? I think I'm in my sixth year now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess 2018, close, 17, 18, something okay. like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And uh, how did you come to work for AMA? Well, I was serving tables, and I was always interested in, in you know cannabis and all that stuff. I had a buddy who got out of serving and started working at MPX, which is okay. a brand here. And uh, I said, "Hey, man, if you they have an opening, you know, you know me, you know I work hard. Let them know." And sure enough, like like six weeks later, he's like, "Hey, come work with me." And that's how I got into it. And it was just like I feel like it's kind of hard to get in the tree sometimes here right. because it's kind of who you know. And I just randomly knew a guy that got me in, and it was like dream come true, basically. So. Awesome. So that was breaking your industry. You said that was MPX. You were working for yeah. them? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the first job I got, yeah. Cool. And at what point did you start working with AMA? I think I, I've been, my four year anniversary is in December this year. Okay. So it's been about four years, right as COVID was hitting. Okay. Um, we had a bunch of people at MPX furloughed and we were still there, you know, harvesting and trimming, getting everything, keeping everything going. And, uh, Everything started to kind of mellow out, and they, a buddy of mine had worked at a AMA for a couple months, and she said, hey, man, it's really cool over here. We make more money. Everyone's nice. And so I was like, hey. Oh, yeah. Go right over place there. the right time, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Cool, man. Cool. And did you start working at AMA as the post harvest manager, or was that a, a role you had to grow into? Oh, I had to grow. I, I Coming from the Midwest where everything's illegal, I didn't know very much about anything. I right. just kind of liked to smoke weed and thought weed was awesome. Um, so, yeah, I got in there. And... Uh, People just are really friendly there, and they're really open with their information. There's not a lot of gatekeeping with stuff, so it's like, right. hey, what are you doing? They're not like, oh, don't worry about it. They're like, oh, this is what we're doing over here. This is how you run this machine. This is how you pack this up. This is what we're putting on our plants. And like, people just really like to talk to you about it because everyone's really passionate, mm -hmm. and it's, it's easy to absorb. Once once someone gets talking about something they love, it's really right. kind of easy just to take it all in, and you learn really fast. So Absolutely, and I feel this industry is full of uh – Tons of just passionate people or obviously you got to be passionate about the plant to, to really, I feel, survive in this industry. Um, but uh, obviously I've met just tons of people that are just full of knowledge and eager to share it because I think we all are passionate about the plant, about how it's improved our lives and how we can help people around us improve their lives with it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. And it's, a, it's nice not to uh, worry about going to jail for <laughs> something you love because in Missouri, I mean, they just legalized it recently. Yeah. But in uh, Missouri, it was one of those things. It was just like very criminalized, very looked down upon. And it was nice to be in a place where it was like, they recognized it for more what it is, more of a, like a, a medicinal thing and a cool like culture and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, really nice. no, a hundred percent. I feel it. I'm again, coming from Kansas city, I was on the Kansas side and I've been arrested more times than I care to say here on camera, uh, over, you know, a couple grams of pot or, yeah. or something, something silly. So I know when I came out here too and got in the industry, it was just freeing. It's, it, it's amazing how quickly that weight kind of lifts off your shoulders mm -hmm. when you're not like, scared you know and then, right. oh there's a cop behind me you know or whatever it's like well, wait a minute this is legal <laughs> i'm 21 plus let's go yep. so hell yeah man well uh beautiful story probably a good segue to maybe start you know consuming some cannabis if you guys are game i'm definitely game <laughs> let's get it if we could have miss jen here introduce our table package we have one of our platinum high roller packages ready for you guys oh man okay awesome awesome thank you very much a little iso on the side there Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank awesome. You. So again, this is like our platinum high roller package. Uh, in this one, we include the limited edition Drone Baker Designs bong. All these are numbered and autographed by the man, the myth, the legend himself. Uh, we also have one of their JBD hammer pipes here. Uh, this guy right here is our E rig. This is our collaboration that we did with Dr. Dabber. If you guys have ever tried the Dr. Dabber XS, this is an absolutely sleek little device, and you can only get these here in the Sky High Lounge. These things are gold wrapped. They have our logos right there, exclusive to us. Uh, we got, let's see here, the products we got here. 
So we do have the Stardog diesel live resin batter for the dabber if we want to go that route. For the flour, we are looking at an eighth of the Kush cake. And this was a really good batch. I was looking at this yesterday. We're looking at 28.3% THC terpenes. We got 8.4 milligrams per gram on the myrcene, 6.8 on the limonene, and 2.56 on the linalool. So this looks like this is going to be some good stuff as well. And we also got some of your stingers, the infused pre-rolls, right? Oh, yeah. These are all the same strain. These are the Reserva Privata. I might be botching that. Uh, Cross with Fire OG Batter infused pre-rolls. Nice. These guys... Let's look at the THC, 40.6%, wow. And uh, 6.1 on the karyophylline, 2.03 on the linalool, and 1.8 on the humulene. So looks like everything's going to be uh, nice and sleepy. So <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? What, how do we want to get started here? I mean, I'm always a, a concentrate guy. That's, concentrate that's guy? my favorite. So if you want to take I a can, couple dabs. I can queue you up on, on yeah. some dabs here if you like. Yeah. David, how are you feeling? You want to do some dabs? Yeah. Let's get it, guys. All right. So I'll get started here on this Dr. Dabber XS, get this queued up. But... uh. Let's talk about you guys and your relationship with the plant. David, we'll go back to you here to start here. What was your first time using cannabis like? Um, I was 13 years old. Um, it was really fun. <laughs> I think that's what I remember. I, uh, the first time I smoked, I couldn't close my mouth. Okay. <laughs> That's a fun first time story. Okay. Um, so that's what really stuck out to me is that I couldn't close my mouth and it was like a couple hours of watching TV with my mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great first time uh, smoking weed story. What about you, Nick? Um, I think I was probably around 13 or 14 as well. Uh, we're on the back porch of the house I grew up in. A little house party with my brother who's a little bit older and they handed me a water bottle with a sprocket on the top and then took a water bottle bong rip Nice. I think I swallowed every last bit of the smoke, <laughs> threw it all up, but uh, was definitely in the clouds and had, there you go. having a good time. Oh, yeah. You threw up? Yeah, I definitely, because they just handed it to me. And they said, all right, hit this. And I said, okay. <sighs> you know, I was like swallowing the smoke. And then I'm like, yeah. oh. And then I, I, I retched. It wasn't actual, you yeah, know, I didn't yeah, throw yeah. up, but like I, I retched and smoke came out of my stomach. And I was like, I don't think I'm doing this right. But <laughs> hey, it worked. So a lot of people say you don't get high the first time, but I definitely, definitely did. So. So my first time, I did feel like I was one of those guys where I was like, I'm not high. Because I just expected it to be so much more than it is, you know? So I was one of those guys just like, dude, I'm not high. I don't know what you guys are talking about. And my, my boys are sitting there and be like, dude, you were just talking about wanting to lick that window over there. You're high <laughs> as shit. Shut up. You know? <laughs> but it is kind of funny. I always like hearing those stories of people who are like, oh, you know, I, I didn't get high. I'm like, well, probably just because, again, it's the expectation. I yeah. feel like... Growing up, you know, in the reefer madness, weed's all bad and illegal. You know, I was expecting like, okay, I'm gonna be like unable to move. I don't, I don't know what to experience. And yeah. it's like, my eyes are lowered, and I'm just laughing at shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people expect more of a, like a, a, what are those called? Um, hallucinogenic feel. Like you're yes. gonna see rainbows and you're gonna feel weird stuff. It's like, no, it's not quite that. But no, I think you're spot on with that, and I think that's just kind of the way it was portrayed with you know in the reefer madness era yeah. and everything like that. You know, then you realize and you're like, oh. This just calms people down. It's not a bad thing to yeah. be at all. So. I'm not as angry as I was before. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> exactly. So, um, Dave, we'll pass this to you here. So it's heating up right now. It's on red. It's going to vibrate and turn green when it's ready to hit. Literally, just hit the mouthpiece, slow and steady. Uh, the guys from Dr. Dabber, when we had them on the podcast, described the XS as a sipper, not a ripper. Yep. So, I actually had one of those. They're, yeah. they're, they're neat. They're, they're really they're awesome little good. devices. I, I think they're really, like, crushing the game, especially that, like, the, the, the price point, the availability, oh, yeah. everything like Very that. It's, so. it's a really, really solid device. Yeah, I don't think you can get much for that price point other than a Honey Badger, which uh, they're, they're great, but they're more of a ripstick than anything. Oh, yeah. when you're going through your concentrates fast with those, yeah, which is, you know, some people love that. I, you know, I love a big, fat rip, but 100%. Uh, I have a Boost Evo, okay. Dr. Jared Boost Evo. Yep. It's, I conserve, and it has great hits, and it's, just, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, if you want to fire that up, literally just press and hold the button until it vibrates, and it'll start the heating cycle back up, and again, it'll vibrate once it's ready for you. Nice. Thank you. So, uh, David, at what point did you kind of start becoming a regular user? Um, at 13. At 13? Yeah. It was kind of like after that first session, you're just like, I like this, and I'm just smoking mm -hmm. all the time, or was it kind of a gradual process? It was a gradual process. Right. I would say by high school, I was smoking every day. Right. You know, I always said the joke in high school. It's like, there's a reason it was called high school for me, you know? <laughs> so, cool, man. No, uh, and uh, do you remember, like, any, like, first strains or something that, like, really surprised you in your early days using? Uh, Thank you, about it. 
White Widow. White Widow? Yeah. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Hell yeah. What about you, Nate? When did you kind of start becoming a regular user? Uh, I, I was smoking on and off in high school, you know, during parties, football games, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it was more once I got into college and a little bit after, I stopped taking my ADAD, ADHD medication. Right. And uh, I've really just started kind of using cannabis to calm myself down, be able to focus on stuff, that kinds of stuff. And then it just kind of turned into habitual. Of course, I love being high as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie and say yeah. like, I just, oh, I use it as medicine. No, I like yeah. getting high, but yeah. it definitely has benefits for me personally that I just really enjoy. And so I like, so I'll probably say like 19 or 20. Okay. Okay. I was more with David there. Like after my, cause I don't think I smoked till I was probably about 15, but it was probably like a year from like, okay, I smoked the first time to been like, Nah, man, if it's tree, it's me. Let's go. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I know for, for me, it was kind of as, as I got older, I started like drinking more. But in the Midwest, you know, alcohol is, is abundant and everywhere. And, you know, if you get caught with the devil's lettuce, you're looking at time. Right. So, you yeah. know, it's always kind of one of those things, toeing the line. Yeah. So, um, what does a, a typical session look like for, for both of you guys? How, how are we getting high at home? Honestly, I'm a, I'm a fast, fast pace. I, so fat dab into my Dr. Dabber. I rip it like two or three times sitting at maybe the computer yep. watching some video game streams or talking to a couple buddies. Then I get back to life dishes and the dog and the daughter and the wife. And Fuck yeah. I just try to get it done, one and done. Now on the weekend, maybe I'll take a little extra time, go outside and all that kinds of stuff. But mostly it's just a pit stop trying to get it go, get in there and go and get back to everything. Turn else. it and burn it, right? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. What about you, David? Uh, I always smoked spliffs. Okay. I was a spliff guy. That's interesting. I mean, from from Iceland, <coughs> I know that uh, <coughs> spliffs are a very European thing. So I don't know if that's like, but I mean, you were smoking after you came to the States. So <coughs> I'm just curious how that came about, because I don't hear a lot of people that are spliff users. You know, no, no offense. I just I'm curious how you kind of landed on that. I would say skaters are OK. OK. Spliffs. Interesting. And okay. I, I have a question. So spliff is a, is a joint with tobacco in it as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And they use very, they use American spirit. Okay. It They're doesn't really work with other cigarettes. Okay. Because the natural tobacco, it's cleaner and everything. It's kind right. of getting you what you want out of it. That's interesting. My, uh, my brother, shout out to my boy, Julian, awesome trim work. Awesome skater. I've been pretty far detached from the culture over the years because I'm just not good at it anymore. <laughs> I live vicariously through him, but that's cool. I didn't know uh, spliffs were a skater thing. I've, I know the last time I was smoking spliffs was some friends I had from Europe that were here on tour, and I'm like, they're like, wait, you smoke it pure? I was <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> but no, that's, that's that's cool. So so some uh, American spirit tobacco at home. You just rolling it up. Well, I mean, it's a spliff. So usually, Europeans they do spliffs because of hash. Because, uh, you, th- you know, it's expensive to have flour all right. the time. So they'll have tobacco and a little bit of hash. And then, you know, that's how they usually smoke. Makes sense. So you're just putting a little hash basically in a cigarette, essentially. But it's got the THC in it. So it's getting you where you're trying to go. Right. Interesting. Man, now I want to split. Too bad we don't do that here. We'll, we'll get there eventually yeah. with the regs, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> um, so let's talk about the federal state of cannabis and like your guys' opinions on it. David, if you want to start, like what are your thoughts on federal legalization? Um, I, Germany, Germany just got legalized and they? they were, I uh, saw that they were all celebrating and the whole city was getting high downtown. Wow. Very interesting. So hmm. I think that, um, f- you know, if we talk about federal, I would say, that it will always be regulated, right? No matter what, um, just, just like everything else. Absolutely. So that's kind of my take on it: is that it's regulated, and you, I don't it can be. I don't really know. Right. I'm not really sure, like, what my take on it is, because, well, in 2017, 2016, what was it? 2016. When it became recreational in Las Vegas, yep, my life changed. Okay, how so? Uh, well, during that time, CBD was a booming right. component in the cannabis plant, and a lot of manufacturers were isolating it. Right. And then with CBD isolate, you could make tons of different types of products. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is one of the questions I had queued up here for you, where you, in 2020, you told Forbes that CBD kind of saved your life. Yeah. And uh, what, what's, what's the story behind that? Um, 
pain recovery. Um, with skateboarding comes a lot of injuries and, Absolutely. um, you know, I also have ADD and ADHD, so I, I would have episodes. I didn't realize that cannabis was kind of keeping me in check and keeping me happy and, right. um, keeping my ADHD and ADD at bay. So, you know, that statement, it stems down from like, from when I was younger. Okay. Um, and then also too, when I got got older, um, it was a it was a substitute for narcotics. Um, I used to, you know, I've broken a lot of bones, so I've gone to the doctor, hospital a lot of times, and you know, been put on, you know, codeine and you know, fentanyl and different types of painkillers. Right. And um, cannabis is is way way better, way healthier, and. Um, uh, yeah, so that's gotcha. my, that's that's my take on it. So the CBD helped you obviously manage the pain, like you said, as as a skateboarder, always undergoing injuries. It's kind of a never ending battle, but yeah, helped you also kick the uh, kick the opiates basically. Yeah, because if I wouldn't have had CBD, I would have been can uh, still been doing an opiates. Right, right. Awesome. That's I mean, that's a beautiful story right there, man. I mean, I've I've met a, a lot of people in my time in the industry. I've been in since about 2016 myself. Um, several people getting off of, you know, o- opiates, all types of like harder drugs and just using cannabis to manage their pain and improve their quality of life to me is a beautiful uh, story. I mean, I've, uh, I was in a really bad accident a little over 10 years ago. I was on all those pills and I remember just being so scared to be out of a script, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's a hard thing to comprehend for people who might not have been there, but it's just like not a, not a good feeling. So, and withdrawals. Just, yes, exactly. And that's what cannabis also stems from that statement is it saved me was because I wasn't scared right as as much because it is really scary to go through withdrawals it does feel like you're dying and um cannabis relieves that absolutely not all the way you're still you know I still went through a ton of withdrawals yeah but still in for the ride but kind of helped uh ease the load a little bit huh to get off I remember in 2020 I went to the hospital because I had like a a stomach injury and um, I used CBD when I was in the hospital they had told me that I couldn't use you know CBD or cannabis or anything like that but right. I wasn't getting better and then when I took CBD um, the inflammation went away and I ended up getting checked out Wow and how quickly did that happen like what was the within changeover? okay so I was there for three days and then within I think like the last 12 hours I used CBD to get okay. out. Wow. So it was quick. Wow. It's almost quick. instantaneous. Jeez. Well, I had also been there for three days, so they were yeah. ready to get me out of there. But yeah. as soon as I started doing better, yeah. Wow. So and that was the turning point for you. So are you still uh, using CBD on like the daily or how, yeah. what's that looking like these days? Yeah. I still skate. Um, I still believe in the recovery cream, um, you know, which is this... Uh, uh, as a CBD product that we came out with in 2017. Okay. Um, and that company is called CannaHempX. Yeah, the CannaHempX uh, recovery cream I've used it several times myself. Uh, fantastic stuff. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to get to be put on board with the. Well, at the time it wasn't called 1933 Industries. It was called um, uh, TGIF. Was that the tag? Um, I remember seeing that back in the days, and I never really knew what happened with that. But now, you just click the light bulb. I'm like, oh, you did used to see that back in the yeah. So it trans- transitioned into 1933. Gotcha. Okay. And then, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I kind of forgot. I was so fucking stoned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm rich too. I'm that's over the, here uh, thinking like, oh, we're gonna smoke more stuff. That's the catch too, with going, the podcast. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I keep I mean, forgetting the questions. Right. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. That's fine. I mean, if you guys want, I mean, we're kind of, we can turn the page here. If you guys want an infused pre-rolling. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's, Let's do it. it. Absolutely. We all got one. Pass around the lighter if you guys want a sparker on up. I'm excited to try this. I've always loved the stingers. I have keep coming back to these. <clears throat> and I know they're a mainstay, definitely on the dispensary floor. Thank you. So, Nick, circling back to the conversation earlier, man, as, as we spark these guys, what, what are your thoughts and feelings on you know, the current state of legal cannabis and what are your thoughts on it going federally? I think uh, it's it's inevitable for federally. I think 
the people who oppose it um, are the type of people that really enjoy money, and they're just never gonna, they're not gonna be able to deny the money that comes out of it. Right. Um, I'm, I'm kind of excited having worked here because I think our regulations are the type of regulations that are gonna impact federal regulations because we're pretty tight. Absolutely. Um, which is so just a good skill set to have is to already be tightened up to where the government's gonna worry, want you. So I think it's gonna go five years, 10. Okay. Things okay. like Germany getting legalized, and there's a lot of states getting legalized that you wouldn't think of, like Missouri. 100%. So I come from Missouri, so you never think, I would never think to, oh, thank you. Never think to, that they would legalize it before, you know, anybody at that point, so. I agree. Kansas is still there, you know, fighting out that fight, and it's oh, funny because yeah. they got Missouri, they got Oklahoma. Uh, I don't know if Nebraska has any legal cannabis. Obviously, Colorado is one of the first, you know, recreational states. So they're literally surrounded by it, and they're still fighting that fight, arresting people for fucking dime bags and what have you. But um, that's oh, another awesome. thing is I think when states legalize, they should uh, put a big emphasis on taking care of people who are in, in prison for yeah. low-level, nonviolent marijuana charges. It's 100%. Like, you're going to make it legal, and you're going to celebrate the money and have people party in, but there's going to be people in jail just sitting there because... Like you said, they had a dime back on them or some were in the wrong place. Wrong, the wrong place time. at the wrong time, man. That's exactly it. It's nine tenths of anything, right? Um, cool, man. So let's kind of we'll, we'll turn the page here on the, the cannabis side of things and let's talk about you guys and your respective brands. Uh, David, so according to your LinkedIn profile, you are the brand manager for Shark Wheels, a company claiming to have reinvented the wheel, uh, who has also been featured on Shark Tank. Um, how did you come to work with them? Um, I. I'm a firm believer in Shark Wheel. I've been a believer since um, 2017. Everybody didn't think they were cool and people kind of talked smack about them and just because they were different, right. you know? Which, in all fair, you know, they are different and they are, they're not conventional. Right. But <coughs> there's um, something really special about Shark Wheel is that it's not just a skateboarding company. It's yeah, they have all types of other wheels, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we make f forklift Oh wow. wheels. Wow. Hospital bed wheels. Okay. Luggage wheels, wheels on a golf bag. Same. Agricultural wheels. That's probably the biggest hit, is the agricultural side of the business, which, it would be so cool if we could have an outdoor field one day with shark wheels. Right. <laughs> hey, I mean. Feeding it, the plants. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it, it, it's inevitable at this point, you know what I mean? Circling back what we were just saying with federal legalization. But, I mean, I could see how the agricultural, because my understanding about the shark wheel is um, you're getting basically a smoother ride out of it just because the way the wheel is designed, correct? Um, Well, what the wheel does is it, it swivels. So like in an agricultural field, mm -hmm. a traditional wheel, it's going to go straight. Right. But a shark wheel, because of the pattern, it will swivel and go straight. Okay. So what happens in an agricultural field is that, that that traditional wheel creates a divot in the field itself. Right. And a shark, shark wheel repairs the divot. I get it. So instead of just uh, keep like push. digging into the dirt, you're basically displacing it, correct? It pushes the dirt back to okay. where it originally was. Okay. So that's why you guys are seeing a lot of success in the agricultural side of the business? Yeah. And well, it's also a technological advance advancement. So um, I thought it was really cool on Instagram, the National Science Foundation of America posted us. Wow, that's amazing. I thought okay. that was really cool. And it's it's a NSF gov. Okay. That's their handle. That's amazing. So I mean, that's a victory right there. Yeah, and they didn't they didn't post us about skateboarding. They posted us about yeah. So the the founder, his name is David Patrick. Okay. He's an absolute genius. Nice. And same with the um the other founder Zach. They're, I mean, yeah. I that's really really thankful and that I work for this company. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad to hear you guys are having successes and everything like that. And rightfully so. I think it is a revolutionary product and uh, literally reinvents the wheel. So make sure you guys uh, check out Shark Wheels. I was watching the, uh, the the Shark Tank cut, too. You know what I mean? It looks like it did well. Everyone was ready to give money to Shark Tank. So <laughs> sounds like a good idea. So hell yeah, man. Um, 
Nick, let's go to you here, brother. So l- let's talk about AMA. You've been there. You said it's going to be four years this yeah, it's year. Going on four. Um, how's how's the team over there? Let's talk about the team and, and you know who are the key players and you know who deserves a shout out. What's going on over there in the AMA camp? Oh man, everybody works really hard over there. It's that's I can give a whole shout out to the whole post harvest team, whole cultivation team. They all work really hard. Uh, we've kind of been streamlining everybody. We got a really tight team. Um, like shout out the bucking crew. They're they've been doing awesome. We just uh introduced some new machines into the into the facility, so we're teaching people how to use those. People are stepping up and coming into that. I think it's a it's more about our, our atmosphere. We have like a really chill we're chill. We understand people that are like we're human. We have to you know, stuff happens and I think people really like that and I think that builds a good tight crew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's camaraderie, uh, you know, that that we're all in this together, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're trying to, what I'm always telling the team here, too, is just trying to make it better than you found it, right? Right. So, uh, really just try to further the movement and make the best products you can, right? Oh, yeah. Spe- so, oh, what was I was going to say, speaking of products. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. segue to next, is like, what, what's coming down the pipeline? What can you tell us, uh, get people excited for, you can see coming on the shelf here soon from AMA? Uh, man, I'm so high right now. That's crazy. <laughs> We're smoking AMA, and I'm high, high as a kite. So that's, there you go. that's one good uh, plug right there. Testament to the product there right there. Everyone's stony and baloney. <laughs> um, honestly, the kush cake that you have right here in front of you, that's oh, yeah? it. Um, it's a hardy plant. We can grow a lot of it. It has a lot of bud on it. Tests well. Um, it's, a great, it's a great flower. So that's yeah. I think that would be the biggest thing coming through. Um, we took down some Mac the other day that looks really nice we'll have to see how that goes through the process and comes out but that one looks exciting I'm trying to think uh got some old staples that we, but we had a lot in the past are coming back we got some 24k coming through that, okay that's looking pretty good so. very nice very nice looking forward to trying some uh some new stuff here soon yeah are you guys uh r and ding any new like skews or product types or anything that you guys know about that we can try to get people gassed up here on the pod I'm trying to think of the newer stuff coming through right now we got something. Uh, we got some honey pot coming coming out. It should become hit in the shelves soon. That was looking good. We have some rotten pineapple. That was looking pretty good. Um, they should be hitting. I think those will be the first times they're coming up on the shelves here soon. So, I think those two are the big ones that stand out. I think. There you go. Rotting pineapple. Rotten pineapple. Rot, yeah. Rotten pineapple. That's a hell of a name. Yeah. I want, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> be the new pineapple express. We're coming oh, yeah. for your your reputation, right? Um. So. We'll go. This is questions for both you guys. We we'll start with David. But what are your goals for the brand? AMA, AMA, Shark Wheels, any of them? Like any of the things that you're working on? What are you, what are your goals and what are you working towards right now? A growing, growing. Yeah, getting more people to realize that we're really really cool. There you go. There you go. Hey, right. that's that's a good goal to have, right? <laughs> Reputations, right? The uh, the court of public opinion, right? So cool, man. Awesome. And what about you, Nick? I just want to you know. I think AMA puts out a good good product i want uh just people to think of us as oh a good standard product you get a good price it does the job and has good good variety and all that kind of stuff i think you just keep projecting there you go. do that push forward and do that so keep raising the bar right keep going keep growing yep perfect message yep. guys hell yeah um so we're basically here towards the end of the podcast and we kind of we talk about the future and we want to talk about the next generation. So I always like asking this question because um, what would be some advice that you'd give anyone watching who might be considering going down a similar path that you guys have taken? What would you say, David? Um, I would say uh, you can never be too careful. Um, I would say that um, if you're like me, um, I would say take it easy. Don't go so hard. It's a long ride. There you go. Good words of advice there. Especially with all that ditch work you've been doing, man. That shit's crazy. <laughs> take it easy. Hell yeah. I wouldn't have expected that from you, honestly. But that's, a, that's good advice. Good advice. Uh, what about you, Nick? What would you give? Um, just uh, be open to learning, honestly. Because like I said, I started as a trimmer and a harvester. Just trimming weed and cutting down plants. But I uh, learned and listened and it got you, me pretty far, which I think as long as you're open, and especially if you listen to people who seem passionate about what's going on and care about the product beyond just like, you know, it's a job. Obviously, everybody, you got to do your job, but there are people that want to go beyond and 
are really interested in making the product the best way they can. And some, you just listen to those type of people and it'll take you places. hundred yep. percent. Great words of wisdom for both you guys. I, uh, Appreciate you guys coming on the podcast. Appreciate your time here. Um, we can probably we can do some dabs at the bar if you guys are down. Yeah. We're down to still smoke more. I know it's like, yeah. what, a 12 on a Friday, whatever. Right. Kickstart the weekend. <laughs> um, tell the people where they can find you. Um, my Instagram is Iceland Iceman. And, uh, you know, shoot me a message if you want to talk about anything. I'll, I respond. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What about you, Nick? Oh man, my Instagram is just pictures of my cat. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, at AMA NEV seven hundred two for the brand. Check out all of that stuff. But yeah, you don't need pictures of my cat. Oh, <laughs> God, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, of course AMA. You know AMA NEV seven hundred two. Yep. Yeah, make sure you guys tap in on Instagram. Is that the handle on yeah. everything? On what are you guys on uh, X, Facebook, everything? In- Instagram. Yeah. Is Instagram. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Make sure you guys tap in. Shoot them a follow. Thank you guys for watching the New Woo Sessions podcast. We'll see you on the next one. We out. Hell yeah, guys. Hell yeah. Pretty easy, guys. right? Yeah. Awesome, man.